The attribute createStop uses its own local variables to initialize the values on any attribute we create. For example, I know that the attribute create supports an attribute called $TX here. And simply what that does is it returns the X position of the incoming point. And because we're creating a point attribute, this local attribute is being evaluated per every incoming point. Think of this, uh, and we can also put in here dollar sign BBX, which I know returns the bounding mock positions of every point on our geometry as it goes from zero to one. Think of this dollar sign BBX or this local um, variable as a way of evaluating every point coming into it relative to the current bounding box. So each one of these local variables can be very powerful for quickly initializing attributes without having to rely on vex wrangling or any other expressions. We can visualize this attribute. Here I have a visualize node and I've set that visualize node to my attribute we can see there. So we can see how we change these things. Where exactly are we getting these attributes and how can we see these values? First, I've split this pane top to bottom and below I actually have a spreadsheet. So we can see here when you're using the spreadsheet, many times you just click on the attribute name itself and you can see the attribute as it goes from zero to one and then you can scroll just to simply see that yes, the attributes are varying across the, the value of that attribute. Let's go to the help. And here we see that we have the help for the attribute create geometry node SOP. And if a SOP has local variables contained to itself, you can actually press in the locals. Here we can see all the local variables that this particular SOP creates and supports. We saw bounding box, there is BBX, so the points relative position in the bounding box to its input geometry. We also have, if there were point colors present, we can access them using CRCGCB. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of other attributes that we can access as well. If we were dealing with particle systems, we could access life or age or ID as well. Map U, map V, map W are used to access any U, V and W coordinates on our input geometry. We, I mean, there, again, have a look at the help and see all the various options that are available. There's the current position TX, TY, and TZ. So we could actually stuff the position of TY into this attribute. And let's do that for the Y position. So here we can do dollar sign TY. And as we saw before, we had the bounding box. So let's go back to that. And bounding box. And let's in here, let's put the bounding box in Z. Going into the Z value, you can see that the ground plane is in the XZ position. And now we can see that for sure, we've got to X, Y, and Z. What makes this really powerful in procedural systems is now we can change the input geometry. For example, I can go to the transform node and let's pin this spreadsheet on this node. And then I can go to the previous transform and now I can use the middle mouse on the translate Y. Remember, we're using TY to determine the green color. So now we have a fully adaptive system that will change based on the input uh, data that's coming into it. So have a look at all the local variables and start using them in, in, in expressions. Another example here, we actually have some attributes for simulation. Many times we have a pop net and you should understand that particles, any simulation will use any existing velocity or an up vector or an orient attribute to determine the direction of the attribute. So in this case, we've created two attributes, one called velocity. And in here, we're using a very interesting expression. Uh, and let's move our flag to, to the visualize so we can actually see the, the attributes that are being generated. We have this really cool expression, $BBX. Now remember, $BBX returns a value from zero to one for each input point's position on the bounding box. If we subtract minus 0.5, we're now getting a value that goes from minus 0.5 to plus 0.5. And finally, multiplying it by 2, we'll expand that to go from minus 1 to plus 1. If we do that for the Z component as well, we can see here we now get attributes that flare upwards. And here we have a visualize that's visualizing our velocity. And exactly like what we thought. So now we have the easy ability to flare our attributes.